Hi everyone, my name is Jeff. Welcome to Rocket Rose Art. I'm going to show you today how I made this stand. Now this stand is for a large bowl, but I'm also going to show you how to make a smaller version of that for this bowl here. So today we're going to make the two stands. Um, if you look at this one here, it has a frosted appearance to it. That's because it was sandblasted after it was slumped. The ones we're going to make today, I want to have a satin finish to it, which means basically they'll be sandblasted before we slump them. Now, it's not a complex thing this, it's, it's reasonably straightforward. A couple of things to uh, consider while we're doing it. Now don't forget, um, we've got a comment section below. I'd love to hear from you, so ask any questions or put any comments in there. And um, if you like the video, hit the like button, that would be appreciated. But we've also got that community tab now, and um, I would really like to hear from you on that community tab. And if you don't get that or you can't see it or something's going on, please let me know in the comments because I'd love to know. So I'll just get on and talk now about the, the design of this and the materials we'll be using. So as far as the design is concerned, it's pretty straightforward. We'll be cutting strips of glass, be assembling them into a rectangle. Um, we'll then be full fusing that together. And if necessary, after that, we'll do some coal working if necessary. Um, then we will sandblast it and slump it in the mould. Um, you're probably getting the idea of where this is heading. And this will be slumped in the same mould as the bowl I made. This one here was for a large bowl. This one here, I'll be using the mould that I used for this bowl to slump it in. So as a result of slumping that in the same mould, we end up with a stand that has the same curve um, as the bowl. And I think aesthetically that is more pleasing. Now you could use a different mould with a different shape and that would work just as well. Um, it's really, you know, what do you think is going to work with the bowl with the bowl that you've made? Now, as far as the design of it is concerned, this particular one I've worked out the sizes. Um, that is how square it is and how wide the uh, the border is here. Um, but with this one over here, I haven't made one for this uh, bowl before using that mould, so uh, that's going to be a little bit of trial and error and um, I don't think it'll be too hard. We'll find out when we get the final result. But uh, knowing the, that's the phone, knowing the dimensions, how square it needs to be, how wide that frame needs to be, so that bowl sits correctly, um, can be a little bit of trial and error. And uh, typically I would make one or two of these to get that right. So hopefully we're going to get that right in one go. Work out the size of the stand to fit this bowl. There's a little bit of trial and error. But generally all I do is I look at how wide I want the stand to be relative to the bowl, so something that I think will look, uh, look pleasing. And then I estimate the width of the frame around that uh, stand so that the bowl will fit in it. Now, I have no formula for this, so it is a bit of trial and error, but you do have to be careful because if you make the frame too narrow, the bowl will hit bottom and it won't sit on the stand. If you make the frame too wide, you end up with a small base for the bowl to sit on, so it's probably not so stable. So it takes a little bit of working out, but it's not, not uh, impossible, and it usually I usually get it in one or two goes. Um, for this bowl, I've decided that I think the stand will be about 13 centimetres across, or square I should say, and the frame about 2 centimetres. This one here, which we're going to make another one of, um, is 16 centimetres across, and the border or the frame is 3 centimetres. So what materials do we need? Pretty simple, just plain old 3 mil clear. Um, don't need anything fancy. We really don't need much in the way of equipment because um, there's not much to do except maybe a bit of coal working, so a grinder will help you with that. Or you could just use diamond pads to do that. 
The other thing that I need to say is that um, while I'll be making these in clear, and I usually make them in clear when I'm testing, um, you can make them in color, transparent or opal, whichever you choose. Um, just decide, you know, just depends upon the project. Now all this glass is Bullseye 90 COE. And remember, I will be uh, slumping on thin fire paper, or I should say fusing on thin fire paper and slumping on boron nitride. Remember that the um, schedules, firing schedules that I give you, are for 90 COE. So if you're doing 96, you will have to adjust them and uh, just keep in mind that all kilns don't fire exactly the same. To make the larger stand, I am going to need eight lengths of glass that'll be 13 centimeters long by three centimeters wide. So I've set my guide here to three centimeters. So I need to cut out of this sheet, I'll need, <coughs> excuse me, four lengths. For the smaller bowl, I'm going to need eight pieces that are each 11 centimeters by two centimeters. So I've set my guide to two centimeters here. And again, I'm going to have to cut four lengths of that. assemble this I'm only going to show you with a smaller one because I can't actually put both of these side by side together in the one kiln so I'll have to go in separate kilns but uh, you'll get the idea pretty quick here if you have a look I've just got a bit of thin fire paper on the shelf I have uh, drawn a square on that the size that's required um, don't ask about the inside square because somebody got that wrong and that's going to be a guide for me as I lay this up and laying it up is basically laying pieces up, staggering them like that. And then the next layer overlaps like that. All the way around. I'm not uh, going to great trouble here. Um, I'll tidy all that up. Actually, I've got to wash all that first. Then I'll set it up and tidy it all up and then it'll go in the kiln for a full fuse. Both of the frames have been fused. Um, they've turned out all right. I don't think they need any cold working at the moment. Now you could just use that as it is if you wanted to uh, slump that and have a clear uh, stand. There are little lines there where the uh, bottom pieces were joined, but this is just a stand, so I don't think that really matters. I am going to uh, sandblast both of these before I slump them. I'm a little worried about that one because I'm not sure whether I've got the width of the frame right. Anyway, we'll find out. I finish uh, sandblasting both frames, as you can see here. Now I'll get those in the moulds and we'll get them slumped. Both the stands are out of the kiln and the um, slump has gone well. You can see how they've all got a nice um, satin finish to them. And I think that one is right. 
the bowl seems to fit in it perfectly so they have worked out well I hope you can see that um, you can use these on a lot of your bowls if you wanted to use them with platters I would suggest trying a couple of um, large bump-ons on the sides there I've done that with one of them and I can put a, a platter in like a flat platter that goes across there another thing I should mention is that um, these ones sit fine but if they don't sit flat you may need to just grind a little bit off of one of the corners or a couple of the corners there just to get it sit flat that should be all you need to do if you use bump-ons on the um, sandblasted piece you may find a little difficulty in them sticking so you may need a little bit of gl uh, glue on those to help them you can also see here the, the quite a big difference between the satin finish and the plain sandblasted finish I think they've all come out well gives you an idea of the profile of those two by the way so I think they've all come out well don't forget you can do them in uh, colored transparent and opal glass if you wanted to it all depends upon the project you've got in the bowl or whatever it is you want to display before I go don't forget about the community tab I do have a poll and a question on there that I'd love to have you answer for me um, so have a look at the community tab if you can and don't forget a couple of more videos up there if you want to see more and our subscribe button down there and uh, please turn on the notifications so you can see new videos as they come out and until the next video I'll say bye for now